Hello and thank you for watching this next uh, video of multiple linear regression. Here we're going to look at another ANOVA problem. So basically what we're going to do here is use our multiple regression methodology to deal with a simple ANOVA exercise exactly the same as what we looked at in module 13. In fact, as you can see, I've stolen this problem, oops, I've stolen this problem from uh, this data from 13.1c. So you can go back to that exercise if you want to see the original data set uh, that lies behind this, this exercise. So what we have here, this is again this exercise looking at a new type of glass, an earthquake resistant glass. So we have three types of glass that were developed. We only want to manufacture one. So in order to test the strength of the window, we have uh, these different panes of glass. We shake them and measure the amount of time it takes before they break or shatter. And so what we were doing in, in module 13 is we had our three types of glass. So then we had uh, type one, type two, type three. We had a number of observations in each of those. And then we calculated our sample values. So we had the mean for one, the mean for two, the mean for three. And in using those, we did an analysis of variance to determine do we have evidence to show that there's a difference in the average number of minutes uh, it took for these three different types of glass uh, to break or shadow or shatter from this um, earthquake, the shaking of the glass. So we are testing to see if there's a difference across the means. What have I done? What a silly mistake to make. Now, what we're going to do now, all not all are equal, what we're going to do now is use our regression methods uh, using dummy variables to, to perform exactly the same test. Okay, so it's a little bit redundant, but I just, I'm, I'm hoping to sort of bring together in your minds an understanding of how these two methods uh, are, are very similar, uh, identical in some ways. So what we have, here's our, our model, uh, sorry, our, our regression equation, and I've had to define dummy variables. So again, we have our dependent variable, we have our, our, our variable of interest here is the number of minutes before the glass fails. That is dependent on which type of glass it is. So I have three types of glasses. So I had to define one of those glasses as the base case or the reference case, that, that scenario against which we compare the others against. We always have to pick one and it can be arbitrary which level of the categorical we pick. It will have some impact on how the parameters are interpreted, but really it's not a, it's not a, a, a thought provoking decision uh, to, to, to make. So here what I've done, I have defined uh, type two as x1 and type 3 as x2. So students often see this and they think, well, what happened to type 1? Where's the type 1 glass? I can see 2 and I can see 3. Where's 1? Well, 1 is actually here. 1 is in incorporated in that initial y-intercept. So let me just say, for example, if I write this expected value, so if I take this equation, and if we consider our base case, so type 1 is our base case, so what that means is that type 2 is 0 and type 3 is 0. Though the values of the dummy variables are both 0. So this term doesn't matter, this term doesn't matter, so the expected value is simply beta 0. What is our point estimate of beta 0 going to be? Well, that's going to be y hat is equal to b0, what is B0 going to be? Well, that is, in the notation that we used in module 13, that is x bar 1. That will be equal to the average number of minutes uh, it took for the type 1 glass to fail. So then what is the expected value going to be for type 2? So if we look at type 2 glass, so this dummy has a value of 1, and this one has a value of 0, because we're looking at type 2, so a T3 dummy is 0, which means that this term doesn't matter. And so we have now beta 0 plus, and this is just a 1, so this is just beta 0 plus beta 1. 
So our point estimate will be B0 plus B1. So the sum of B0 and B1, that will be our point estimate of the mean of type 2 glass. Okay, so right now, right away, we should be able to see that the nature of these coefficients that we're estimating, those are telling us the difference in the value of the dependent variable for that particular level of the categorical. So the difference in the average number of minutes be before failing between type 1 and type 2 glass, well, that difference is calculated here as B1. When we look at the next one for type 2 glass, expected, oh, I don't know why I'm doing it in blue, that's okay. So again, we come back to here, now type 2, this is 0. I'm looking at type 3 glass now, this is a 1, so this term doesn't matter. And here we have beta 0 plus beta 2, so that point estimate will be B0 plus B2. This will be equal to x bar 3. So again, students look at this and they see type 2, they see type 3, and they say, where is type 1? Well, there's type 1 right there. Type 2 and type 3 are all described in reference to type 1. So it's B0 plus B1. So B1 is the difference. And type 3 is B0 plus B2. So B2, again, is that difference. So with that in mind, let's go through our our table, so the regression output looks the same. When we're looking at ANOVA exercises with multiple regression, I don't really care too much about all of this stuff. Uh, here we have an ANOVA table that if you were to compare this against the ANOVA table that we did in uh, 13.1c, you would see that this ANOVA table, having been done using the multiple regression methodology, this ANOVA table is exactly, exactly the same. All of the numbers are the same. For some reason, these two columns get switched around, but it doesn't matter, the numbers are all exactly, exactly alike. So, moving down. Now we have here our estimated regression equation. So for part A, state or write the estimated regression equation. So we have y hat, is equal to, here's that coefficient, 5.2 plus 0.22 type 2 plus 0.61 type 3. So there's our estimated regression equation. Now, interpret the coefficients. So what this first coefficient is telling us, actually, let's even go back uh, carefully erase that. Oops. If we look at the y-intercept first. So the y-intercept, this is y hat, this is b0. Well, what is b0? According to what we just looked at up here, that's x bar 1. So 5.2, that tells me the average number of minutes before type 1 glass failed. So that's our point estimate, that's our x bar 1, the sample mean for type 1 glass. The next coefficient is 0.22. Well, that's now the difference between type 1 and type 2. So that means that the point estimate for type 2 glass, if we come, oops, oh, what's going on with my machine here? I want to erase there we go. So that means that our point estimate for type 2 glass is 5.2 plus 0.22 so this x bar 2 is equal to 5.42. So this is giving us the difference between the average length of time uh, a type 2 pane of glass failed uh, compared to a type 1. The next one, uh, third coefficient here, 0.61. Again, this is telling us the difference between type 3 and type 1. So this and this notation here is 5.2 plus 0.61. So this is going to be about 5.81 minutes. So those coefficients are telling us the difference in the average value of the dependent variable between these two uh, levels of the category, always relative to whichever one we've chosen to be as the base case or the, the reference case. Okay, now we want to do the appropriate hypothesis test. So again, keep in mind 
this ANOVA exercise, if I come up here, I don't want to run out of room. If we come up here, I'm just going to squeeze this in just to, so we don't forget. When we were looking at the ANOVA, this was mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3. Not all are equal. So, oops, so how can we go about effectively testing that same thing, but in this different methodology? Well, if we look at it two at a time, say, well, how can I test to see if there's a difference between type 1 and type 2? Well, what that means is that the expected value for type 1, which here we've identified for type 1, that expected value is beta 0. The difference between the expected value for type 1 and the expected value for type 2, that difference, if they are equal, that difference would be 0. So this is beta 0 minus beta 0, beta 1. So that would be equal to zero. Well, beta zero minus beta zero, those two are gone. And so we're left with beta one equals to zero. So that would tell us, is there a difference between type two and type one? Is this statistically different from zero uh, or not? Because if it's not statistically different from zero, then it means that there's no difference. Because remember, these are telling us the difference in those values, the average values. So if beta 1 is equal to 0, then in this case, type 2 and type 1 are not statistically different. Similarly, if we look at, now I erase this, and compare type 2, uh, sorry, come back here, compare type 3 to type 1. So that's going to be beta 0 minus this one, which is beta 0 plus beta 2. So if those two are the same, type 1 and 3, well then, what that means is that the difference is going to be equal to zero, and again, beta zeros cancel out, and we're left with beta two equal to zero. So if beta one is equal to zero, type one and two are the same. If beta two is equal to zero, type one and three are the same. Now what about comparing type two and three? So if we look at this one and this one, so our expected values for type two and three, well now this is gonna be beta zero plus beta one minus beta zero plus beta two. That difference would be equal to zero, which means beta zeros, these cancel out. This means beta one minus beta 2 is equal to 0, which means that beta 1 is equal to beta 2. So this tells us, is there a difference between 1 and 2? This tells us, is there a difference between 1 and 3? And this tells us, is there a difference between 2 and 3? Well, bringing all of this together, what kind of a test are we doing? Well, if beta 1, whoops, let me just get some more room here. Let me write it in over here. If beta 1 is equal to beta 2, and if they are both equal to 0, then that is exactly the same as testing this hypothesis, that the mean values are all 0. If this is 0, and this is 0, and they're equal to each other, that tells us that there's no difference across uh, these mean values or these average number of minutes before these different types of glasses fail. So this is our null, our alternative, not all are zero. And so after all of that, here's that p-value for that corresponding f-test. And in this case, alphas, if we use an alpha of 0.05, 0.04 is less than our level of significance, so we reject. And here we have evidence to show that, yes, there is a difference. These parameters are not all simultaneously equal to zero. We do have evidence to show that at least one of these types of glass is different from the other. Now, we can in fact come down and look at the individual p-values. So for each of these, this is a test to determine is that parameter, that one individual parameter, uh, different from zero. And so here we can see, okay, well, the y-intercept is statistically different from zero. So 
that reference case, that type 1 glass that took an average of 5.2 minutes before failing, that 5.2, that is statistically different from zero. Well, that's, that's good. The glass didn't just break immediately, so this is a statistically valid length of time. Uh, and then if we look at the other p-values, so this one here, 0.36, well, that's larger than any reasonable level of significance, so we would not reject, so we do not reject. So here, I am unable to show that this parameter on type 2, I'm unable to show that this one is statistically different from zero. So there's no difference. I'm unable to say that there's a difference between type 1 and type 2. What about type 1 and type 3? Well, here we have a p-value that is less than alpha. So here we do have sufficient evidence to show that there's a difference between type 1 and type 3. Good. So that's that's the extent of what we can do here with these um, using dummy variables for ANOVAs. We could have as many additional treatments uh, in this data set as we want. Uh, we have always stuck to three because it kind of keeps things a little bit easier. But hopefully this made some sense. Hopefully we can see the similarities between using this multiple regression methodology to basically test exactly the same thing that we did up here. Sorry, those aren't both going to fit on the screen at the same time, but such as life. Okay, I hope this helped. I hope that it made sense. Uh, if not, hopefully watch it again. <laughs> Maybe it'll help. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.